Now we got ourselves in a pickle. What we don't want to do is freak out. Ah, it's cold. We'll get our pack out a couple different ways you can get out of the water. You can put your arms up. You can sit here and you can kick and you can raise your body up out of the water. This is why I really like these ski poles. I can put them in and really help pull myself up and out of the water. Yeah. Now the work starts. Okay. So it's not always gonna be a situation where we're gonna walk straight into the water, obviously. It's gonna be more like uh, we accidentally fall in, hopefully, right? So ice, when we start looking at ice and how thick it is and knowing what we're crossing, it's very important. Um, but even the thickest ice on the, on the best lakes that's covered with a little bit of snow and you don't see what's going on underneath the water, you can still fall through. Um, something could be going on underneath weakening that snow so uh, that's for crossing ponds and lakes and things like that so for this we're just going to jump in i'll kind of walk you through putting my pack up and my rifle and things like that and then yeah we'll hang out for a bit get out talk about dressing down dressing up when my speech starts to slur don't worry about that if i pass out somebody help me <laughs> now uh so when i'm not gonna you're gonna see after especially about the first minute I gotta catch my breath, and then after that, everything should start calming down. So we'll just go until we actually fall in. Catch your breath? Alright. So now we got ourselves in a pickle. What we don't want to do is freak out. Ah, it's cold. All right, so freaking out will only make matters worse. As far as getting out of the ice, if you can tell that it's very, very uh, extremely uh, solid ice, you can get out in that direction. But normally, you want to get out in the direction you came in. So, we'll get our pack out a couple different ways you can get out of the water. You can put your arms up, you can sit here and you can kick, and you can raise your body up out of the water. Um, so it's not too hard getting up, out, even though it's super slick. If for some reason you can't do that, and you're not able to, and you need some grip, this is why I really like these ski poles. I can put them in and really help pull myself up and out of the water. Now notice how this ice keeps breaking. That's common, super common. So you're gonna have to fight through that. Push it out of the way. Keep coming to get up and out. So we'll stay in for a while. So uh, cold shock. That's definitely the number one reason for fatalities in cold water immersion and uh, hypothermic situation. So my body, I need to catch my breath. I need to relax. I need to not panic. I need to make sure that I've been in this situation before. I know what it's like. And this is one of the reasons why we do this type of training. So, uh, panicking, you're usually gonna last about three to six minutes. So if I'm sitting here and I'm thrashing around, freaking out, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to swim anymore. If I can't swim, that's how I go under. And then if I'm in the water too long, we're talking 15, 30 minutes plus, all the way up to three hours sometimes, you are, uh, that's when we ta start talking about dying of hypothermia. So three levels of hypothermia, mild, moderate, and severe, uh, based off body temperature. So mild hypothermia is about 95 degrees, your core body temperature. You can't read body temperature with, uh, any thermometers, right? So it's gotta be pretty much an ingestible pill that you take that reads your in internal core body temperature. Um, we don't have that out here, so hence why I'm staying in for six minutes and not uh, 10 to 15. <clears throat> and 
and in the water it's not bad so right so you're sitting here and if you don't freak out once you catch your breath you're actually okay 20 minutes after getting out that's going to be a different situation um, I'm going to be cold I'm going to be shivering uh, when I stop shivering and my mental status starts going away that no I know that I'm in a moderate hypothermia so the moderate stages So as far as getting out, uh, the order of business. So the first thing I want to do is get out, dress down from head to toe, and dress up from head to toe. So what I mean by that is I'll take off my hat, I'll take off my the chest rig that I got on, I'll take off my uh, jacket and gloves. I'm going to go on my pack, and I, I waterproof the bare minimums. So I waterproofed a top layer. A happy jacket, which is like my uh, down jacket, and then uh, some gloves, a beanie, things of that nature, and, and some bottoms. So I won't have pants, but I'll have th like thermal underwear essentially. So I'll do my top first. We'll move up there into the tree line, and then I'll start moving around. I really want to get my core body temperature back up, so I'm going to move, exercise. I don't want to sit there and uh, if someone falls in the water, I don't want to put them in a litter and try and warm them up because it'll take forever to warm your body up that way. You need to keep people moving. Um, they need to continuously be moving. Exercise is an awesome way to warm your core body temperature back up. So what I'm going to do is I'll head up into the tree line and I will strip down my pants and my bottoms. I'll put uh, my new pants on and then I will start running around getting firewood trying to start a fire. I don't have to. I could just run around until I start getting warm, but I'm gonna run around and get firewood and build a fire at the same time, so. Got a few more minutes. So what's going on with my body? Uh, all the blood from my limbs and everything that's not necessary is going straight to my core. So I'm starting to lose the feeling in my fingers, my toes, my feet, my legs. It's kind of like everything goes numb. I can still use them, but everything is definitely going numb right now. So, uh, keep it moving, keep swimming. That'll definitely help. But your body's natural reaction trying to save itself is, hey, save the organs. We don't want the organs uh, getting cold, falling below that 95 degrees. So, that's what's happening. That's why you lose all your fine motor skills. Your legs, your hands, your arms, those are useless. You don't need those. Try and keep your head out of the water as much as possible. Uh, but we submerged my head completely. If you can, when you fall in, break your fall. That way uh, you don't get your head wet. We're at six. All right, we'll call that good. So getting out. Yeah. Now the work starts. I know this ice is safe. I can just tell by looking at it. But, we got to pull our stuff over there. So, the way you should pack your rook or any bag is putting the essentials up top. So, up top, I always keep my survival kit. Now, nobody brings a towel out into the, when you're hunting or on a mission. If you do, then good on you. But, uh, so I don't have a towel, and of course, I don't have a towel to dry off. And so, cotton shirt, don't ever wear cotton. I did that because I didn't feel like getting one of my good shirts. 
wet. So, just by looking at the skin, you can tell my body is cold. Not crazy cold, but it's cold. All right. Get the head nice and dry. This is for all you not warfare warriors. Put the red beanie on. All right, now we're feeling better. We're not in the clear yet, but we're definitely feeling better. All right, <clears throat> so from here, I'm gonna pack up the stuff that I need that's essential. We're taking this with us because it's got my knife on it. We'll leave this stuff here. We'll leave the kit here. <clears throat> and we can come back to it. Come back and get all this stuff after we warm our bodies up. All right, so we're moving. 